Welcome back, you absolutely amazing YouTubers. I'll tell you something funny <clears throat> before I get started here. I didn't realize that I was vlogging. Didn't even think about it. But I guess I am. <clears throat> there are times, especially in the estuary, where larger fish are going to respond uh, very well to a to a bigger fly. A larger fly consistent with the prey items that they're seeking. Now. They're predatory piscivores. They like to eat fish. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that that's all they eat. Certainly not. Uh, and there are plenty of times when they're eating uh, amphipods and little shrimps and even mayflies. <clears throat> so that's all good, but, but uh, there are times when that bigger fish, um, and what I mean by a bigger sea run? I think any sea run that's in the 15 or 16 inch category is a bigger fish. Uh, I have caught them just a hair over 19 inches. I've heard, oh, I heard about monstrous fish up in Washington. I heard about a 17 pounder. I don't have a clue how that could be. I, I, I really, I really don't get it. Because their life history is inconsistent with uh, attaining that kind of size. But, as it may, 20 inches a monster. It's a big, 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 big fish. And uh, see, I'm looking for some senyo. A me barred metallic predator wrap. And I think this is orange and silver. Don't want very much. I'm going to use a composite loop here to build this hackle. Try to make it fairly small. <clears throat> um, I have no. Oh yeah, bigger, <laughs> bigger fly. Kind of funny to get distracted. So I got a size six here, and this is really kind of a. a this is a soft hackle-ish fly, and uh, using a composite loop and a glass bead so it doesn't sink too fast. Don't want it to sink too fast. How fast do I want it to sink? Boy, I got microphone cord problems. Well, if I'm fishing last, uh, last, well, one of my fond, some of my fondest memories involve fishing for sea runs in two feet of water. Uh, I mean literally two feet of water and a lot of it happens in three feet of water and four feet and certainly in deeper pools and, and when you get up river from the estuary you're gonna find fish in seven eight nine feet of water but but you won't be catching them on a fly if they're on the bottom in eight or nine feet of water might catch them on a worm down there or a rooster tail or something like that. So if they're laying in a couple feet of water, if they will let you approach, which they won't always, if they will let you approach and make your presentation, and boy, if they are feeding, they are going to be on it just instant, instantly. Um, sometimes you'll throw your fly out there and um, you haven't even had a chance to start stripping yet and you see a bulge well you, you'll see a you, you won't see that bulge in the water unless it's really really calm in tidewater sometimes if it's just glassy calm two two and a half feet of water you throw that fly out there and you see that it, the water just kind of raises up uh, 
and and uh, there's this little pressure wave coming towards where your fly is, and you better be prepared to act instantly because they're going to be gone before you have a chance to to set the hook. <clears throat> and then sometimes you're stripping, and you will see the wake approaching from the rear, and that is so cool. You know, to have a fish that's like. 13 or 14 inches making a wake behind your fly as it comes at it. That is that is really a thrill. And um, oh yeah, so I saw a video on YouTube recently. It was Les Johnson and Mike Kinney. Well, I haven't met either of those gentlemen. I'm not sure if Les is with us anymore. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. So I got something really funny to tell you. Um, I have no idea. Boy, I got up, had to get some cat food out. Had to fill the cat food container. And uh, so I happened to get down my hands and knees over by the cupboard and looked and reached into the cupboard for the cat, the major cat food supply. And guess what I saw? I found my Berkheimer 8115, which has been missing for over a year. And I have searched high and low. I mean, I've really looked, I, I looked everywhere I possibly could imagine for it. Couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. Uh, it was stashed in the back of the cupboard but you couldn't you, you couldn't possibly tell it was there unless you were down on your hands and knees and it must be for a year when I've got the cat food out I didn't get down my knees so I've got my 81 you know what else I found I found a Winston B3X six weight two-hander this is like Christmas in March. Actually, it's like my birthday in March, which is just a few days away. So anyway, I, I'm so relieved. I'll have to mention that to, on, the, on my blog. I found my Berkey. Uh, so, I, uh, that, 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 I, I'm getting better at these composite loops for uh, hackles, it, one of my big problems is overdoing it. Too much material. It's really easy to put too much material in there. And everybody says less and more, and that's fine. It's like yak, 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 yak. We all know that. But then, when it comes down to really setting up your your composite loop and you know people like uh, Jerry French I think are more organized more consistent in their cutting and trimming I'm more of an intuitive kind of guy um, I probably need to more need I know I need to be more systematic about it but I like to develop an eye for things and I'm stubborn and resistant to change and it's it it all kind of works out if I'm sitting down and tying several dozen flies at a time but boy if I only do three or four or five or six sometimes they every fly is different and that's that's not the end of the that, that's that's not the end of the world in fact it's, it's just fine when you're just going fishing but one part of what you like to do is have your flies all lined up nice and neatly in your box it's nice to have a little bit of consistency. Nice to have a lot of consistency, as a matter of fact. 
So we're going to go with this. We're going to go with another fly here. Uh, these sea runs are wonderful fish. Um, in the winter, uh, you encounter them um, often while you're steelhead fishing. I, I never target them in the winter. In the spring, I will often encounter them incidentally when I'm fishing for a steelhead or a spring chinook. And uh, it's really interesting, you know, fishing in the spring you might run into uh, a combination of first-time hawk migrants and they will tend to be in the 10-inch uh, size range, it'll be all silvery, it'll be all smolted, and then you'll run into your Celts. Now your Celts ha have spawned. Uh, apparently as you go further north you'll, you'll have fish some fish will make their first migration in from the ocean and they'll be sexually immature. But here in Oregon, they're virtually all sexually mature when they make their first spin in from the ocean. Boy, this doesn't want to line itself, does it? Um, so, you know, people kind of say, oh, Celts, they're kind of undesirable. Well, guess what? If you know you run into some Celts and they've been feeding well and they're real silvery and they they're not super fat, but they're getting quite plump-ish. They're a lot of fun. And and that's why I make real sure I've got a barbless hook. And uh, I'll tell you what. I'm sure there are there are years when you know if the runs a thousand fish I only get a I only get a chance to show my fly to 20 of the in migrants and I might get a chance to show my fly to a hundred of the out migrants and uh, they're a lot of fun their take is spectacular. Their fight is spectacular. I tend to fish them on a three or four weight uh, with a four or five X tippet. They're quite game. Um, I enjoy the take, I enjoy the fight, and I let them go. And uh, You'll, you'll see fish in a variety of conditions. You, you'll see, uh, well, when you're fishing really low in the estuary, trying to intercept springers, it's pretty rare to see one that's really in its, still in its stream colors. The kelps have nearly all silvered up again and gotten quite plump again. Um, but I've seen a few that look like they've just dropped down from the tributaries. I'm pretty happy with the way these flies are coming out. So I probably rambled on enough for this uh, for this episode. Who knows what will come across my mind again and whether it will be a complete or incomplete thought. And I'll probably be doing some more of these uh, Composite loops. I, I need to come back and do a 10, size 10, and see how that works out. But I think, I think this one's looking pretty good at a size 6. I'll do, I'll do another 8, then I'll do a 10. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. Bye.